At number 5 we have an easy but overly confused to some users, Emu Deck for Windows. Originally designed for Steam Deck, Windows Edition became free to users in late 2023. In terms of aesthetics, it looks great and actually runs Emulation Station. Runs fairly smoothly too. Supported systems range from Nintendo Switch, 3DO, Sega Master System and the C64. Adding games as well as BIOS files is a fairly simple process by dropping files into clearly laid out folders. However, and the reason this is only at number 5, is the fact that the setup process in having to download Steam can be a little confusing to some users. If you do happen to be a regular Steam user though, there's a really nice feature in MU Deck Windows Edition where you can actually have the ability to add or push your retro game library into Steam. Some of you might wonder why Batacera is in 4th place. Remember though, this is a top 5 easiest front ends. Let's look at the positives first, and there are plenty of those. Firstly, it doesn't run Windows in the background, and so you will likely get a smooth experience as you are not running so many background processes at the same time, which can inevitably cause slowdown in games and lag. Secondly, it is very simple to use. Adding games is a simple case of pressing the F1 key and dropping games into the ROMs folder and BIOS files into the BIOS folder. Appearance wise, we can simply use Spoon's Downloader, providing a wide range of different styles which can then be customized too. Batacera mainly uses RetroArch to power your games, however some systems do require some additional setting up. In some ways, Batacera is very similar to Retrobat in looks and operations. It doesn't support Techno Parrot, which can be a deal breaker for some people. Now, the reason I place this at number 4 is simply because flashing Batacera in Enter the Computer's BIOS menu to boot it can be a little bit confusing for newbies. Apart from that, Batacera is a great and easy front end system that gets more popular as time goes on. Now, Emulation Station Desktop Edition is a fairly new system and it is extremely promising as well as fully compatible with most retro games that you would expect to find on the front end emulator system. Very simple to use, it's just a case of downloading it, generating a ROM directory and adding your games into the relevant folders. It is very smooth to run and doesn't feel too heavy on the computer's resources. We can download some very nice themes using its themes downloader too. We can also use scraping tools to download artwork and preview videos very easily with Emulation Station Desktop Edition. Emulators can simply be placed into the Emulators folder, which I recommend RetroWatch Portable for this, although other systems might require additional emulators too. Mapping out controllers is very simple and straightforward. If you are a user of Retrobat, you might reconsider swapping to Emulation Station Desktop Edition at some point, as each update makes this front end better and better, and the team behind Emulation Station Desktop Edition are certainly updating this a hell of a lot at the moment. Check out Emulation Station Desktop Edition. Noslun is a front-end system that you should definitely keep an eye on. It's been around a little while now, and I do think this one could do with some more exposure than it's currently got. It's a little bit underground. When I released the Beginner's Guides the other day, many said on the video as well as on social media that they have never heard of Noslun before. Currently, Noslun front-end supports around 20 to 25 different systems, but likely those support systems or for the games and systems that you're actually going to want to play, such as all the popular systems ranging from MAME to Nintendo NES to Sega Mega Drive, PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, as well as PS3. It is extremely user-friendly in most cases. Simply download it, let it create an MU folder, and drag and drop your games there. A nice feature with Nostalgia Front End is that it gives us an option to automatically download emulators through the front end itself. Having said that, some emulators will need to be downloaded outside of Noslan, such as my PlayStation 3 setup guide showed a couple of nights back. Lookwise, this emulator looks unique and certainly some nice eye candy to look at too. Once games have been imported, Noslan automatically downloads artwork too. 
If you aren't so OCD on having every game of every system, Noslan is definitely worth looking at. And here it is, the overall front end system that is free and easy to use is Retrobat. This is a front end emulator that I have historically covered mostly, although today I have pretty much exhausted those setup guides. Like many front end systems, Retrobat is powered by Emulation Station and mainly uses RetroArch to power your games in the background. Like most front ends in this top 5, particular systems will require downloading emulators outside of Retrobat. Retrobat is largely pre-configured for you including RetroArch which is a custom version. Easy to use such as using a Retrobat directory to drop games and BIOS files. It comes with an impressive theme downloader which is often updated with new Retrobat updates. We can customize themes too, add our own music and splash videos very easily inside of Retrobat. I do find that sometimes Retrobat seems a little heavy on my computer's hardware and I will mention that Batch UI is a bit of a mess at the moment. Batch UI is a tool that comes with the download where we can mess around with particular settings. All in all, Retrobat is definitely a newbie friendly and fairly simple to use and will appeal to most people interested in front end systems. Retrobat covers pretty much every console, arcade system and microcomputer known to man and by far is the most comprehensive in terms of emulation support. 